All right, hello and welcome. Today we are going to go over, are you a contradiction? Because in many cases and many things we find a lot of verses and a lot of things we do are different. We go to assembly, we go to church, we sit there and we do praise and worship and we do all kinds of stuff. But is it scripture? And half of that or 90% of that 50 to 90 percent of that ends up what not what we live right throughout the week we say okay well I got to work I got to do this I got to do this I got to do all these things so now all of a sudden we're a different person throughout the week than we are on the Sabbath right and that's why it means so much that even we get the Sabbath correctly but the pure wisdom right James 3 and 17 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure so there's nothing wrong with being zealous there's nothing wrong with telling people about the Sabbath there's nothing wrong with telling them how wrong December 25th is but then it becomes peaceful then we learn Shalom right it's first pure then peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy James 3 and 17 and oh boy do we live that way do we really live that way no most of us say my family first right a lot of this sadly is because that's what we're taught we're taught we go to this building we go to this place we come in, we sit down, and there we have it. We're cured. <clears throat> right? There you go. You come to the building, you sit down. The hospital's here, you're cured. The problem is, this building does much of nothing for you. It's the preaching, it's the teaching, it's what you learn. And when you get taught wrong, you're full of hip hypocrisy you're full of hypocrite you're walking contradiction right we'll go over the new covenant later but starting at that we come to this building and what do we learn the old covenant the new covenant 90 percent of most preaching is taught out of the old testament is it not we're taught abraham we're taught jonah we're taught exodus we're taught this we're taught all these things and then we're told that doesn't pertain to you basically right this is why we have all these confusion all these children all these people that are confused because they tell us about Jonah they tell us about Exodus they tell us about all these people and then tell us well that doesn't really pertain to you we want to hear about Shadmach Meshach and Abednego we want to hear about Daniel in the lion's den, but yet, all that doesn't pertain to you. So now, what do I have to do? Because if everything they did was different, right? So we get taught a different scripture, a different gospel. We get taught that they had, Daniel was in the lion's den. But you, John, all you got to do is come here on Sunday. We know that's a lie. Do we really think the Creator has changed from people not bowing down to other gods to come to church on a Sunday? We haven't even done enough research to figure out what the Sabbath day truly is. <clears throat> and not only that, we haven't been taught that the Sabbath day is actually on Saturday. And we haven't been taught many things. You can pretty much tell somebody, even at an assembly, that is different. Because they're walking the opposite way of most people. Correct? Believe it or not, most women and men, the women have on headdress. They have modest clothes. They are walking in the opposite direction of the assembly. So is that really an assembly? How can you call yourself an assembly and you're not modest? You're not, you look like the world. Test it out. See if it's true. Go to Walmart and see if your ripped jeans, ripped clothes, 
parts hanging out, things so tight you can see what everything is, and then go, are you different? Is that modest? Same thing with men. Skinny jeans, shorts, all this stuff, whatever, whatever goes, and ripped jeans to boot. Are you different? So uh, many people used to go to services and they had their suits and ties and they was definitely different than the world. But that was only one day a week, right? Why is it that only on one day a week we're a contradiction to the world, but every other day we look just like the world? It should not be so. We should every, whether we're going to assembly or we're going to town to get bread, we should be the same, right? The men should be wearing the seat seats. The women should be wearing the head covering. If not, the world sees you and they're screaming. You're a walking, talking contradiction. And we're telling them, we're, oh, I'm teaching you. I'm telling you. And we come into the Sabbath day and I'm teaching you and I'm telling you. And that's why I can come and sit with you on December 25th. That's why I can, oh no, I can't go to the bar and drink with you. Well, maybe one. Well, and it goes on and on and on. So what happens, the world's screaming, you're a contradiction as to what you say you are. What you profess to be. Essentially, you're a hypocrite. No, I'm not. I am trying to help you. And then we go and we think we can go and do as the world does. Act as the world does. Go to the same place as the world goes. And what happens? We're different. Because we say we are. We don't look different. We don't look a bit different. But in our minds, in our own heads, we're different. What is that? That's deceit. That's all that is. That's pure deceit. We are letting the enemy teach us, tell us that we are different when we truly are not a bit different. Now, the outside, the inside go together. They are one and the same, or they eventually go to be one and the same. Right? That means that eventually the outside and inside work as the same. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as Elohim slaves. Oh, wait a minute now. 1 Peter 2 and 16. I want to be free. I want to be obedient. I want to be this. I want to be that. We are either a slave to the Creator or we're a slave to the enemy. That's all there is to it. We are either obedient to one or the other. Now, the thing with the Creator, once we come out of bondage, once we come out of things, then He calls us what? Friend. The enemy finds us as just a toy. He wants to destroy us. No matter where you go and what you worship and how far you get into Satanism, it is a destructive pattern. The end is death. The end is destruction. And that's all you get out of it. No matter how Hollywood star you claim to be, what you claim to do, what name puts on your screen, it's all the same. It's the ending. Look at Johnny Cash, Hank Aaron, all these people. They're all what? At one time, they might have been the best of the best. Oh, they was on TV. Oh, they was this. Oh, they was that. Oh, right? Muhammad Ali moved like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And boy, everybody loved that. But then what? How is those later years? Don't know who he is. He's shaking and this and that. That's the way of the enemy. It looks and sounds awesome. And it just, you know, it tastes, oh man, that's so, and you think it's great. But the end of it is death. And even when you're in the middle of it, you know it's wrong. When you're up in the church doing the herk and the jerk and you're doing the twerk and you look like everybody else, but you're different. I'm different than 
those people down at the bar doing the twerking. I'm different than those people over here doing that. I'm different than the people on the TikTok doing that. I'm doing it for... You're doing it for who? Some of the things we should watch, what even comes out of our mouth. Some of the commercials, some of the things are just almost abominable, if not right there. Both prophet and priest are godless. Even in my temple, I find their wickedness, declares Yahweh. Jeremiah 23 and 11. You know, it's sad that we have become to a time that we can have YouTube, we can have the Internet, we can have Facebook Live, we can have these things. And in a way, they are good. Because for you and me that's here in California, I'm in Illinois, we can communicate, we can talk, we can have the Sabbath, we can do things. We can go over the scripture. We can go over the Torah. We can go over the commandments. We can ask and talk to each other. But in the most part, you know what it becomes? A bunch of shaking and dancing. MTOI and this one and that one and whatever name they call themselves. And it's no different than Sunday church. It's not a bit different. And we're not careful. It's worse than because we're going on his day. At least they're not doing it on a set apart holy day. This is a holy convocation. It's an appointed day of Yahweh. A day that we're not supposed to do things of ourselves. We're not supposed to participate and be self-pleasing. Don't work, but don't be self-pleasing. Right? That's what it's about. It's not about you. It's about the Creator. And it's about the Creator telling you what to do. <clears throat> but we've turned it into a day of me. A day of what I like. Because we've learned from the churchianity. We come, we sit down. We listen and we hear what we want to hear. And that's what we get. And we walk away and we walk through and what do we find? We're walking through life. People are dying. People are sick. There's problem after problem. And we walk right by it and we say, oh... <clears throat> well, you know, they was old, well, they was sick, well, they was smoking, well, they was this, well, they, and we let this happen right in our so-called churches. Don't you think the Creator would be upset with us if he come and sat down and even listen to what we did? And then what do we do? Oh, well, you know, you're old. I understand. So you know what you do? You just go sit down and watch the TV. That's where you can get it. I understand. You don't want to get out because you're afraid of the pandemic. You're afraid of a paper mask. You're afraid of a rubber band. You're afraid to breathe. I understand. Go watch it on TV. Go watch it on YouTube. For years and years and years we proclaim, come to this building, come to this place, come to who? Who we're really supposed to be bringing them is to the Creator, to Yahweh, to Yeshua, the Healer, the Master. That's what we proclaim for years, is it not? This is the hospital, this is the place of healing. This is, oh, if you would just come here it'd all be better. And then we say, oh well, close the doors and watch it on your TV. We'll be on Facebook Live Sunday morning at 10, Sabbath at 12, Sabbath at... Who does this help, folks? Who have we helped? What are we doing? What are we saying? Is that not a contradiction? Yahweh makes firm the steps of one who delights in him. Psalms 37 and 23. <clears throat> Again, if we're not careful, we are just proclaiming things and not doing them. We're not living them. We're running to the bank. We're running. <clears throat> Man, I'm on my way. I'm on the fight. I'm on the battlefield. I'm running, running, running. But, you know, I mean, if we have to wear a paper mask, then call it a day. If we have to do anything hard, stop running, 
stop the fight, you stub your toe, you know, you ain't got to run all the time. Isn't it sad? We go and we say things and we want people to believe those things we say. And then when something hack, a hiccup, a sneeze, oh my gosh, somebody came to church and they sneezed in the back. <laughs> Last year, wasn't you all about healing? Two years ago, wasn't your church about healing? Wasn't we supposed to go and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the demons? Do we believe it or don't? Do we not just do it the way we want to? What's sad, the world sees this. You can deceive yourself and have the enemy telling you all day long how great you are. <clears throat> you can sing a song. How great. And who are you singing to? You. Really? Are you not? You're singing to you. If you're filthy, does the Creator want to hear from you? If you're full of pride and hypocrisy and everybody just seen you in your true form, cussing everybody out at Walmart, right? I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about my kids. I'm worried about me, 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 me. But yet the Messiah gave his life that we could have salvation. He sat there and said, those who are around me are my family. Those who are sitting here. But yet we go against, we rebel against the very thing we're supposed to be doing. We want our family. We want our mommy and our daddy and our brother and our sister. And we want all. We want to act like we're five. And yet he says, what? You'll lose your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. All these for my name's sake, for his name's sake. But we don't want to let it go. Why? Because we want to be churchy with everything. We want to say we sold out, but it's only in words, right? It's only in words. Our life does not attribute what we say we do. Well, I believe, doesn't matter what you believe. You once believed Sunday church. You probably once believed Jesus. You probably once believed you were saved. Well, how can you be saved? There's all kinds of people. I was saved in 1984. But I didn't know the Sabbath. I didn't know this. I was immersed in the name of Yeshua. Then how was you saved? In what verse saves you? Because truly salvation is when the master, when Yahweh says, well done. Until then, you're, how can you be saved? Even Paul said he hoped in salvation. But yet we walk around and that's another problem. It's another contradiction. We are saved. We are ready. We're sanctified. Says who? What Bible verse? Give me the Bible verse that says you are now saved. That you are now ready to go. That you are ready because you're still sinning. Says that the person that says they do not sin is a liar. And the truth is not in them. So how can you be saved if you're always sinning? See, without, the, without Yeshua... Without Yahweh, we have no hope in salvation. We're sinners. We're dead to rights. It's over. We hope. And how can we, what do we have hope in? Ourselves? Most people are hoping in themselves. They hope that their song service, they hope that them getting up and singing. And what's sad, you can watch it. Turn it on and watch. You'll see MTOI. You'll see all these places that some of them's come and gone and they get up there and they dance and they're so timid and they're so oh my goodness oh oh my gosh oh my gosh I'm gonna sing in front of everybody I don't know what to do with myself oh and what is everything screaming that they probably shouldn't be doing it from the inside of them and then you turn it on two months three months six months later <laughs> Mariah Carey. -hoo 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 -hoo. What happened? Now you become arrogant. Now you become haughty. Now you're a choir leader. 
That wasn't hypocrisy? That's not showing the world the devil's way? Come on now. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. Luke 12 and 2. The problem becomes that we think we can do all this and have all this haughtiness and nobody knows. <clears throat> nobody knows I'm really singing for me. Nobody knows I'm singing to get my own YouTube channel. Nobody knows what I'm listening to. Right? We're just whistling and going on with our own problems, our own things, whatever. Nobody else. It's it's nobody else's business. Really? I am my brother's keeper. Oh, no, now you're going too far. Everything we do, if it's truth, always seems to go too far for some. It's too much. You're asking too much of me. How can you be so rude? How can you be so mean? How can you be so this? How can you be so that? The world sees it. Yahweh sees it. How can we ask the world to do anything for us? How can we ask them to believe what I say if I don't look nothing like what I do? I work for Ford, but I'm driving a Chevy. Wow. Right? Then you don't believe in your own work. You don't believe in what you're doing. You don't believe. And we're not careful. We do that. That's what we're doing on the Sabbath. We believe it so much that we come and set and eat on the Sabbath. What's that really about? Abraham believed Elohim and was accounted to him for righteousness. <clears throat> I know nobody can be righteous. <clears throat> nobody can be, oh, we're all just filthy rags. Oh, what does that say? Abraham believed Elohim and was accounted to him for righteousness. Galatians 3 and 6. Like it or not, believe it or not, which we should believe it. If we don't believe it, then what are we doing? A lot of people don't even believe what Scripture says. And they think there's a contradiction between this and that and this and that, but they don't understand if we believe the scriptures, it is counted to us for righteousness. If we don't believe the scriptures, then we have our filthy rags because we don't even believe and there's no truth in us and we have no hope of salvation. You see the difference? I'm trying to teach you where your salvation is, how you can get it, what we're doing and what we're doing wrong. Sadly, we can't tell people the wrong no more in any aspect. Politically, religiously, you tell somebody the wrong and you are hate speech, right? There's something wrong. There's something going on here. Oh my gosh, how can you tell me I'm wrong? Who are you to tell me? And we end up with a bunch of self-righteous people who think they are leaders, who think they are, we have women, all they want to do is sing, and that's their ministry. This is my ministry. What ministry? Where do we find that in Scripture? Truthfully, where do we find any of this in Scripture? The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearketh unto counsel is wise. Proverbs 12 and 15. The problem has become, we've become a people that we can Google something, we can YouTube something, and whatever we agree with, that's what we go with. And when something comes across that's not to our liking, we can discount it, we can find a YouTuber, we can find a pastor, we can find a place that will agree with what I agree with, right? It's real easy to do that. The hard part is when you come, just like the Sabbath. When you come to the Sabbath, then you say, Hey, now I have a choice. I'm either going to do Sunday or I'm going to do the Sabbath. I can please myself and go with the crowd and do what they do. I cannot lose friends. I can still have a pastor. I can still have the families. I can still have all the worldly things. 
That should tell us something right there. Or I can start keeping the Sabbath the right way. Now, we go down the road. There's nobody else keeping the Sabbath. We look up. Oh, there's MTOI. Oh, there's the Shalom Assembly. Oh, there's this place. Now, where am I going to go? Now, we have another decision. Now, we go there. <clears throat> they walk, talk, and act just like Sunday church. Do they not? Some of them worse than some of the Sunday churches. You go to some of the Pentecostal churches, some of the other churches, and they are more fine-dressed than they are. These people look like bums. They're going to church and they look like the world off the street. They might be homeless. If you didn't know any better and you asked somebody that's elder and they walked into your church, they would think there was something totally wrong. Isn't that a shame? If you have an elder man walked into your church and he's seen all the ripped jeans and torn clothes, he would wonder if he was all a bunch of homeless people. Is there something wrong? Ask an elderly woman. Bring her there. Is there something wrong with these people, dear? They're all ripped up clothes. There's ripped jeans. Oh, well, that's today's world. Really? I thought the scripture says not to have ripped clothes. I thought it says that you're not supposed to have ripped clothing. I thought you're supposed to have modest. How come things are pushing, popping out in different places? Oh, well, you know, Granny... You're just old. You're just old? That's our excuse? The scripture says, The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearketh unto counsel is wise. Proverbs 12 and 15. But here we go. We're going to do it our way, right? I mean, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Galatians 6 and 3. Many of these people that call themselves rabbi, many of these people who stand in front of you and proclaim to be a pastor are self-appointed, not anointed. I'll say it one more time. They are self-appointed and not anointed. I know it's sad, but what's even sadder, if that's a word, Sad, er, is they are standing before a congregation of people and they are lying to them and they are wolves in sheep's clothing and they are letting them do these things. And they know better. Most of them are elders. They know better. They grew up when ripped jeans was, you. Uh, there's something wrong with your family. Think about it. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s, 2000s, what was you? If you didn't have the Nike, if you didn't have Air Jordans, if you didn't have parachute pants, if you didn't have this, what was it? You was, man, your people, oh man, you must be poor. You don't have the Gator shirt, you don't have this shirt, you don't have polo, you don't, right? But now, somewhere between here and there, we've come up with ripped jeans, ripped clothing, Look like a homeless off in living color. Hey, everybody, look. Right? But we want to proclaim we're righteous, we're saved, we're sanctified. When we know that the scripture says you're not even supposed to talk with that kind of clothing. Look it up. You're not supposed to speak with ripped jeans. You're not supposed to talk with ripped, torn clothes. We're supposed to even inspect our clothing. If there's a tear in it, it's done for. I mean, a tear, a rip, it's un unsat. Do we do that? No, we don't care. We wear whatever. So tell me, in what way are we different than the world? Rip jeans up and down shirts, whatever, tight as whatever, it doesn't matter. But the world sees that and they say, well, they ain't got nothing. Because we do what? Oh, well, we're, you know, we're appointed by, you know, the elder, the bishop, the deacon said we could do this. For if a man think himself to be something, he is nothing, he deceives himself. Galatians 6 and 3. 
the world will tell you, the enemy will tell you that you're doing great. You're on top of it. Man, I mean, you have it. You're there. Don't listen to them. They're just jealous. Right? They're, they're jealous of you. They're jealous of what you have. They're jealous of your singing voice. Really? Have you heard Paul Wilbur? It's amazing. Everybody, almost everybody wants to sing Paul Wilbur. But nobody really sounds like him. And then you got women trying to sing Paul Wilbur. Do you think you match up to it? No, you don't. In most cases, you don't. So why are we trying to imitate something? Again, we're chasing after men. We're chasing after the worldly way. Here, CSI sells. Here, Miami Vice sells. Here, whatever's going right now sells. Paper mask. Let's get on the paper mask trail. Why are there believers making masks? Ask me that. Tell me that. Please, someone tell me. Why is a believer making a mask? Your breath, the Ruach, what do you run by? What do you believe in? Who do you believe in? We see people all over. I see people I used to go to church with that would stand up and believe in the J guy. And they have strength in the J guy. And boy, they wish they would bring somebody to pray for them because they was all ready. And you see them all muffled up at Walmart. Won't wear headgear. Won't wear this. Won't do that. But they're all muffled down at Walmart. Same people 10 years ago would have said, What are you, Muslim? What are you doing wearing those things? What's your, why do you let your women wear those things? Why are you letting them people do that? Are they Muslim? I think it's amazing the Twinkie that's dangled in front of people and they bite. And we all become circus monkeys for someone's entertainment? It looks like it. Where is the power? Where is the truth? Where can we stand and say we believe in Yahweh and I am not worried about the breath that comes out of me, are you? What about the verse that says even if you're poisoned, you will not die? Oh, I never read that one, huh? I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. You that make mention of Yahweh, keep not silent and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. Isaiah 62, 6 through 7. If we would have went and done, or let me back up, if the Maccabees would have done what people were doing today, there would be no temple. There would be no nothing. They would have just been destroyed and wiped off the face of the earth. If he would not set his people to not be silent, there would be nothing. This would be a bowling alley. And it would have been a bowling alley. And it would have been before. All these things that we hear, World War One, World War Two, what's happened here, what's happened there. If he had not set his men to not be silent, Again, to not be silent. Here's your scripture of the week. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. You that make mention of Yahweh, keep not silent. Are you a believer? Do you mention his name or do you not? Because if you don't mention his name, if you're going to act like the world, then you probably shouldn't be mentioning his name. Don't be believing. Don't be saying that you're a part of something you're not. You know, that's like the winning football team. Well, we believe in the saints. We believe in the saints. The saints lost miserably. We believe in the bears. We believe in the bears. The bears went to the Super Bowl. I told you so. I believe in the bears. Well... Bears lost first game season. Oh, I believe in the Saints. I believe in Green Bay. I believe in... You that make mention of Yahweh, keep not silent and give 
him no rest till he established and till he make Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. Isaiah 62, 6 through 7. We're going to have to go over praise and worship too because a lot of people do not get this. A lot of people think we can do what we want to do the way we want to do it. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10 and 11. We have been taught in so many ways wrong. We have been taught so much wrong. And it's not okay. But we have to understand where we got taught wrong, what we're going to do about it. If we just stay silent, if we just let this generation pass and we're teaching kids that, oh, guess what? You can do what you want. You can believe what you want. You can do anything you want and just put his name on it. What are we teaching them? We're not different. We're just like the world. Micah 7, 18 and 19. Who is a Elohim like you? Who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all of our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Micah 7, 18 and 19. If we're not careful... Our God becomes what we do. Whether we know it or not, whether we believe it or not, that is what we are doing. Right? If you believe in the Creator, if you believe in Yahweh, you're not going to bow down to another idol. Whether it's paper, wood, or stone. You're not going to don a mask because you're afraid or because the mask is, well, it's just easier that way. It's always been easier to do the ways of the devil. Always has been. Hey, just do this. Okay. Hey, just drink this. Okay. Hey, just put this on. Okay. Just don't put nothing on. Okay. It's easier. I ain't going to worry about clothes. Right? Because of sin, we have things to deal with. We all have choices. But the choice you make is your tomorrow. Well, how come this is bad and how come that's bad? How come... The, the presidency, and I prayed for this, and I prayed for that. Have you lived right? It, it should not be if we the people cried out to Yahweh, if we the people kept the Sabbath, if we the people, Yahweh would appoint and anoint somebody over us. But since we didn't seem to care about abortions, since we didn't care to take Bibles out of schools, since we didn't seem to care about having prayer in schools, since we can't pray at a football game, since we, and does the list stop? There's probably a thousand things you can put on this list of we didn't seem to care about having abortion clinics. We didn't seem to care about having abominations on our TV. We didn't seem to care about keeping the Sabbath day set apart. We didn't seem to care about passing on the information of the Sabbath day or the feast days. Why are we in the predicament we are in? Because many people put their trust in Trump. Many people put their trust in a man. Right? Well, if he goes away, then the world's falling apart. If this goes away, it's falling apart. Where is our trust? We can like who we want. We can love who we want. We can say what we want. But at the end of the day, if you're not for Yahweh, if you ate overboard for Yahweh, and I mean life, everything the Word says we have to do. If they are not that person and does not stay that person, look at David. Look at what he did. Look at all he did and yet look what he did. We have to look at the Messiah. We have to look at the scriptures. We're given the Torah for a reason. Right? We have what was called the oral Torah. We'll go over that later. But we have the Torah. We have it written down. Why? 
so we can pick it up and read it and say, oh, this is what that says. And now I can share that with someone. Romans 10 and 3, since they did not know righteousness of Elohim, they sought to establish their own. They did not submit to Elohim's righteousness. Romans 10 and 3. And I would submit to you that's what the world's doing today. Since they've thrown out all the righteousness, since they've thrown out the Bibles, since we don't have assembly like it should be, we've come up with our own ways. Have we not? And I'm talking to you assemblies, Torah keepers, we have come up with the same worldly way that they have done. And if we're not careful, it's the same thing the world sees. Dear Music, thank you for always clearing my head, healing my heart, and lifting my spirits. We're saying prayers to music and to musicians. Are we not? And believe it or not, that's what you're doing when you're doing your two hours of singing. Yahweh says, my house has become, Yeshua said, my house has become a den of thieves. It's a house of prayer. Prayer and the bebop singing and the two hours of singing and the two hours of talking and all that music does not add up to prayer. It's a taking away from. How do you take something away from a baby? You just snatch it out of their hands and watch them cry and scream and no. You show them something else. Hey, look here. Look what I got. Look, look. You want this more than that. You want this more than that. You want this more than that. And whatever it is, if you find it, you can trade it off, right? You can sneak that out and get that sippy cup and go fill it up and they never know the wiser. That's what the enemy's come and done to a lot of your so-called assemblies. Hey, if you can dance and jig. Hey, if you can have a little bit of the world. If you can talk like the world. If you can act like the world. Just a little bit of the world. It will bring the world. Yeah, of course it will bring the world. Because you are the world. Of course it makes sense. You want the world? You bring the world. And a lot of these people know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And they're doing it on purpose because it's an hireling. It's about the money. It ain't about salvation. It ain't about truth. It ain't about teaching. It's all about, hey, I'll come and teach you this. I'll come and show you that. I'll come and, right? People love concerts. Why is it they've shut down concerts and churches? How are they not the same? If your church was shut down and you're crying and you're upset about it, are they not the same? Is it not the same worldly view that they consider the church just as much as a concert? And how did that get by anybody? It, we can have marches for all kinds of things. We can get a million people to go to Washington, D.C. We can get a million people, for whatever reason, to go and do different things. But for the creator of the universe, for the Bible's sake, for the scripture's sake, we got to agree to disagree. we got to agree to do this. We can't get ten people hardly to agree on much of anything. Who do you think's behind all that? For everyone who says, oh, we're going to agree to disagree, who's behind that? It's not a Bible verse. The Bible says, study and prove yourself. Divide it rightfully, righteously. So again, we're going and doing things in other ways other than Scripture way. So it all comes down to is don't be hypocritical. Don't go and do what you're saying you proclaim to be and be a follower of the Most High, but yet you're doing nothing of what His Son did. You're doing nothing of what He says to do. Other than, thou shalt not kill. Wow. You got one commandment. There's 612 more. Oh my gosh, here we go. So we must do what the Creator says. We must not go and say, hey, I'm going to be 
different than the world, but I look and talk and act like the world. Right? It don't work that way. I hope it's edified you. I hope you've learned something. I hope that we reflect in the mirror. One of the biggest things we can do is look at ourselves as who we truly are. If we're not careful, we look in that mirror and we're righteous. We're sanctified. We're ready. And really, we're full of sins. We're full of anger. We're full of fear. We're full of sadness. We're full of everything but what we should be. Fear is not of Yahweh. So why are we fearing? Oh, but they said, they said, who's they? Who is they? Who puts that on your TV? Who puts that on your phone? Who do, Who tells you these things? It's amazing. We have scripture in black and white. Here it says, so saith Yahweh. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, you know. TV says there's a baloney, balonis going on. No. <laughs> Did I buy that? Did I buy that? Is that the baloney I buy? Real quickly, fear hits us because why? For most, they're not following Yahweh. You get sick, you feel really sick, you think there's something wrong, you think something's wrong. Fear starts setting in because are you correct? Are you ready? Are you what you said you proclaimed to be? And for most, they start praying and begging for more time because they know they are not. I hope, again, this has edified you. It's not to put down. It's not to make fun of. It's not to be haughty. It's the truth. The truth sets you free. The truth shows you that mirror of there's some speck on your face. You need to fix it. That's what it's really about. It ain't, oh my gosh, but that's the way a lot of people take it. Because it's a double-edged sword, and it cuts them, and then they have a decision to make. Now I'm either going to change my ways, and be modest, and be wholesome, and look righteous, and talk righteous, or I'm going to find every way till Sunday, <laughs> get it, to do what I want to do. Right? So until next time, may Yahweh bless you. May His kind of shine upon you, and may He grant you shalom. Shalom, everybody. Thank you very, very much for watching, and for listening. Until next time, have a great and glorious day. Again, any questions, comments, anything you would like to hear, prayer, to be immersed, any of these things, then let us know. Till next time, Shalom and Yahweh bless you. Shalom.